Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to learn how to do mole conversions. These are problems that use the technique of dimensional analysis to convert uh, between different units as we're trying to describe a sample in the lab. Our objective is to convert the amount of a substance that we have between units of moles, representative particles, grams, and liters. The liter value, it will only hold for a gas under a special set of conditions known as standard temperature and pressure. So if you have a dozen donuts, a dozen eggs, and a dozen football players, do those dozens all have the same number of items in them? Well, yes, because a dozen means that you have 12 of something. A dozen is a basic counting unit. So here's a similar question. If you have a dozen donuts, a dozen eggs, and a dozen football players, do these dozens all weigh the same? Well, goodness, I hope not. A um, dozen football players should weigh a whole lot more than a dozen eggs, uh, maybe even if those were dinosaur eggs. Um, so the, if we're talking about one of these samples, or two of these samples, say a dozen eggs and a dozen football players. The number of items in those dozens is the same, but their weights are really, really different. And so um, a given sample can be described in these different ways. And sometimes as you compare two different samples, their description may match in one thing, like the number of particles present, but differ in a different unit, such as the mass of the sample. So our mole conversion problems are uh, problems where we're going to convert how we express a measurement among these, this set of units that's very closely tied to the concept of a mole. One of the units is the mole itself. Another unit is grams. Another unit is how many particles are present. And then liters for a gas at STP. This is a technique that helps us connect the microscale and the macroscale. So the microscale would be, say, how many molecules of water we have present. And then the macroscale would be the mole or how many grams of the sample um, we are working with in the lab. So microscale refers to the particle picture. Macroscale refers to the lab scale picture. This graphic holds the key to doing our unit conversions for mole conversions. Um, I'll refer to it as the radiation sign. And the center of this radiation sign is one mole because that ties together all of these other units. By definition, the mass of one mole of a compound is the molar mass. And a mole of a substance contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles. Remember that representative particles can be atoms, molecules, or formula units, depending on what kind of a substance we have. And then a new number that we're throwing in here is 22.4 liters for the volume of a gas at STP. Uh, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure, which is zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. Back in chapter one, we did some dimensional analysis problems. Um, this was the example we used about converting five and a half feet to inches. And our basic process was to start by writing whatever you're given with its unit and sticking it over one. Uh, that's just to make it look like a fraction. Then we're going to multiply it by a second fraction. And with the second fraction, we're going to call it a conversion factor. The top and the bottom of the conversion factor need to be two different ways of expressing the same quantity. So if you take a standard ruler, we could call that ruler either one foot or 12 inches. And the way you decide which one goes in the bottom is that the, the one you put in the bottom needs to match the units of what you were given. If you do that, then the units will cancel out as you work the problem. So for instance, here we have feet in, in our given, whoops, ah, there we go, feet in our given and feet down in the bottom of the conversion factor to cancel out. Um, then that only leaves the units of inches, which are what we're trying to find. 
So the units of the target, the thing we're trying to find, will go on top. The difference in doing the mole conversion problems is we're going to have to build our conversion factors from the four quantities that are present on the radiation side. So here's an example. How many moles of ammonia are needed to have a sample that weighs 50 grams? So um, anytime you see grams in one of these mole conversion problems, you are going to need the molar mass of the substance. So I'm going to do a little pre-calculation here and find that molar mass. And to find the molar mass, we also need to know the formula of ammonia. The formula is NH3. Now if I go to the periodic table and I look up nitrogen, it has a mass of 14. And then we have three hydrogens, and the periodic table says hydrogen is, uh, is 1. So 14 plus 3 times 1 gives us 17 grams for the molar mass of ammonia. Now, when we're going to do any of these dimensional analysis problems, we're going to start off by, by writing the number and the unit. And now that we're getting into some chemical examples, it's a good idea to write the chemical as well. For the mole conversions, it won't be that critical, but the next thing we're going to do after mole conversions is reaction stoichiometry, and it's just absolutely critical that you write the chemical for that. So we're just going to get in the good practice of writing the number, the unit, and the chemical. So we will have 50 grams of ammonia, and we will place that over 1. And now we're going to multiply that by a conversion factor. Without um, even looking anything up, I know that the bottom of my next step has to have units of grams of ammonia because that's what we were given. The units of the top have to have um, what we're looking for, and we are looking for moles of ammonia. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that in. Now, if I refer back to that radiation sign, the number that's associated with grams is the molar mass of the compound. Well, we found that the molar mass was 17 grams, so I'm going to write 17 down here. On the radiation sign, the number that goes with mole is 1. That's the, the um, item that is right in the center of that diagram. The number that matches with the word mole is 1. So if I run this through my calculator, I'm going to have 50 times 1 divided by 1, so I don't type the 1s in my calculator, and then divided by 17. And so 50 divided by 17 is 2.94 uh, moles of ammonia. When it comes to rounding, well, let's see, my calculator actually said something like this, 2.94117 six, four, seven, one. Um, when we go come to round these problems, um, if in a previous class you learned significant figures, I'm basically asking you to round to three significant figures. If you don't know significant figures, don't worry about it. We're not going to go over all of those rules. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do instead is this. Find in your answer the first non-zero digit. Okay, so our first non-zero digit would be two. And then I want you to count over two more digits. So there's one and there's two. So that is two decimal places. That's where we want to round to. So if I'm going to round that to the second decimal place, I get 2.94. Oh, and also just to, to talk about our units, um, I started with grams of ammonia. And I also have grams of ammonia in the bottom of the next step. So having the same thing in the top and the bottom simply cancels out. Our objective for this video is to convert the amount of a substance between moles, representative particles, grams, and liters for a gas at STP. Um, we set up the basic process, and I worked one example. If you're interested in more examples, uh, please come back for the next video.